Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. And welcome to The Porter Report. We're continuing our conversation with Gareth Porter. Gareth Porter is a historian and investigative journalist on U.S. foreign and military policy. He writes regularly for the Interpress Service on U.S. policy towards Iraq and Iran. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thank you again, Jessica. Um, where our conversation left off. Let's talk more about Rouhani. He has said that he has the authority to make a deal with the United States to end the long-running conflict over Iran's nuclear program. Even though Iran's nuclear program has typically been understood to be under the control of Supreme Leader Khamenei, why does Rouhani have Khamenei's trust? Well, that's a very important question. I'm glad you've raised it because this is one of the things that um, has been questioned uh, in recent months, recent weeks, uh, in the commentary and analysis on Rouhani's role as president. And the reality is that Rouhani had won the trust of uh, Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei because of his uh, working with him on a day-to-day -day basis as the secretary of the Supreme National Security Council of Iran. Uh, and, and this, you, we have to understand or, or re remember that Rouhani had been in that position, the equivalent of sort of the uh, national security advisor, if you will, in the United States, although it's a very inexact comparison, for 16 years or 17 years from uh, 1989 uh, to 2005, uh, and during that unexampled period in which he had uh, worked on a day-to-day -day basis with the Supreme Leader uh, to get approval for policy uh, decisions uh, on national security, it's clear that Rouhani had essentially won over uh, Khamenei uh, in a way that was really quite convincing and, and lasting. Um, and to the extent that he was able to get uh, the Supreme Leader to approve decisions that were really quite daring, really out of the box, if you will, uh, in this period from 2003 to 2005. He was taking positions that were really very much against the political grain. For example, in his getting uh, the Supreme Leader to approve the decision to agree that Iran would suspend its enrichment activities. This was uh, a political red line in Iran. It was something that the overwhelming majority of Iranians uh, were very emotionally, passionately opposed to. And for the Supreme Leader to agree to that reflected a degree of trust in Rouhani that is really quite astonishing. And uh, then if we skip to 2004, 2005, Rouhani then, as the person who was in charge of the nuclear file, was, of course, carrying out negotiations, not personally, directly, for the most part, but through a negotiating team that he had assembled with the three European states, the UK, Germany, and France. And during that period, the Iranian uh, position was, again, very far-reaching. I mean, the, the Iranians made a proposal in March 2005, which was really quite far-reaching and in terms of the concession that Iran made. What, what Iran proposed to do in that uh, proposal that was made in March of 2005 was that the, the Iranians would convert all enriched uranium immediately into fuel rods for uh, or not immediately, but it would be it would start the process of being converted into fuel rods for civilian nuclear power, and that it would uh, commit itself that there would be no stockpile of uh, enriched uranium that could be then used for higher level weapons grade enrichment, which is of course the greatest concern the United States and other powers have expressed with regard to the Iranian nuclear program ever since then. Uh, and, and that was very significant because Iran has no capil uh, capability itself, or did, did not at that time, although it does now, to convert the uh, uh, low enriched uranium into fuel rods. So that meant that it was going to turn those uh, that uh, that enriched uranium into a fuel rods through a either the French or the the Russians um, abroad, or have them do it 
on uh, Iranian soil, but under the control of the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. So again, it was a very far-reaching concession by Iran. It was one, it was a proposal that the, the Europeans understood really was in the interests of the West, but of course the George W. Bush administration had no interest whatsoever in agreement with Iran and said, no, will not agree to have any centrifuges spinning in Iran. So the opportunity was lost. But again, I think the important point here is that the Supreme Leader was willing to go along with that on the assurance by uh, the uh, official himself, that is to say Hassan Rouhani, that this was in Iran's interest and, and that the a principle of Iran's long-term control over uh, its nuclear program would not be compromised. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Gareth. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.